got non-conference men's basketball for you this afternoon. The Eastern Washington Eagles coming in at 3-6, and six, paying a visit to the 8-3 Coyotes from the University of South Dakota. And how is everybody doing alongside Brad Newitt? I am Jay Elson. Brad, good test for both of these teams coming into the day as they wind down their non-conference schedules. This Eastern Washington team, even though they don't have a great record, Jay, they've got a win over Stanford, a very nice win there. They played a really difficult schedule. Yeah. They've only played one home game, and this is a team that can be really dangerous offensively. It will be a good test for South Dakota here this afternoon. East, Eastern Washington in a stretch of 36 days and 10 games without a home game on the schedule. Let's take a look now at our players to watch, brought to you by Avera. Bogdan Blisnuk, one of the very best in mid-major basketball. This guy has got a ton of skill at six foot six, averages 16 points a game, Jay, can score inside and out. He's just gonna be a really tough matchup here for South Dakota today. Matt Mooney, pretty tough matchup for Eastern Washington, though, too. Yeah, there's gonna be two great mid-major players going head to head in this one. And Mooney really carrying his team again offensively this season, averaging 16 points a game. He's got two 30-point games on his resume already this year. Gonna be great to see these two go at each other. Yeah, Moody just needs four points today to get to a thousand for his collegiate career, which has taken place both at both at Air Force and here at South Dakota. Stay tuned, opening tips and your starting lineups coming up next. It's Eastern Washington and South Dakota on Midco Sports Network. Nick Young, you know, the Cavs-Warriors finals rematch is a gift to the world. I would like to return the favor, so tell Santa a few things you'd like for Christmas. I want a win. Okay, a triple sure. Triple-double will be great. At least 48 points. A clean block on LeBron. Oh, yeah. I'd like for you to take me to space. Oh, sounds fun. All right, well, we got you this gift card. The drop-off between Duke and Drake may have been obvious, but South Dakota's effort didn't change. In fact, if anything, it got better. Tristan Simpson and the Coyotes muzzled the Bulldogs' high-powered offense with an inspired second-half effort and route to their ninth straight home win. Today, USD will look to extend that streak yet again as they welcome Eastern Washington to the Sanford Coyote Sports Center. Welcome back to Vermillion. Tip off now, just moments away between Eastern Washington and South Dakota. The Big Sky meets the Summit League. Good test, as we said earlier, for both of these teams. Starting lineups brought to you by Vermillion Area Chamber and Development Company. Brad, we talked about Blisnick. Jacob Davidson, though, another guy, took advantage of his redshirt season last year for Eastern Washington, a much improved player as a redshirt freshman this yeah, year. Just a freshman, averaging eight points a game and really shooting it well from the three-point line. He's going to be a key scorer to come alongside Bliznuk here today. Tristan Simpson at a career-high tying effort against Drake here in this building on Wednesday night. And if USD can get Simpson to start adding scoring to this already potent starting lineup with Mooney, Hagedorn, boy, that's really gonna work well for Craig Smith's offense. Coach Comparison brought to you by Montgomery's Shante Leggins in his first year, spent the last eight years as an assistant at Eastern Washington, played his collegiate ball at California and Fresno State. Now the man in charge of the Eagles. He's opposed, of course, by Craig Smith in his fourth year here at South Dakota. 61 and 49 with the Cows, 133 and 78 overall in his career. Of course, also been a head coach at Mayville State in the NAIA ranks and an assistant with Tim Miles for a long time. Colorado State, Nebraska among those stops as well. Tyler Hagedorn will step into that center circle and face off with Mason Peatling for the opening tip. Ball is up, tip is controlled by Eastern Washington and we are underway here at the Sanford Coyotes Sports Center. Coyotes 17-1 in their two seasons in this building. They've won nine straight at home, dating back to last year. Matt Moody getting hands on that pass to flex it out of bounds. 15 seconds on the shot clock for Eastern Washington. Now right away, Jay, you see how active Mooney will be on the defensive end. He leads this team in steals. Almost had one right there. Jack Perry, the freshman out of Australia making his second consecutive start. First two starts of his collegiate career. 
Shot clock winding down. Terry, tough little runner right at the buzzer, and it won't go. Rebound goes to Carlton Hurst. A fantastic defensive possession for USD. Right out of the gates there. Ray Birch Manning into the paint. Creates some space there as he lowers the shoulder into the chest of Mason Peatling. No whistle and basket counts. Well, that's a player that Craig Smith's also trying to get going offensively. Trey Birch Manning has had some struggles this year, Jay, but coming off a great game that he had against Drake here a few nights ago. Outs doing some switching defensively as they often do right off the start. There's a look at Davidson. Can't get that lay in to go and a foul. To boot. Now, Eastern Washington has started a smaller lineup again here tonight, and uh, that's really going to be a challenge for USD because they're going to have to guard a lot of perimeter action in this game. So far, they've done a pretty good job in the first two possessions. Dante Leggins clearly not afraid to change things up in that starting five. A lot of different lineups so far this season as they try to get things figured out as they near the Big Sky schedule. Carlton Hurst to the rim and a left-handed finish. Uh, two offensive possessions for USD, and they have spread the floor themselves and attacking off the dribble, being very aggressive early on. Trey Birch Manning drawing the defensive assignment, at least here early on Blizznut. And a fadeaway jumper is good. First points of the afternoon for Blizznick and Eastern Washington. As you watch Blizznick play today, you'll see why he's on pace to become Eastern Washington's all-time leading scorer, Jay. He's just a really difficult guard one-on-one. -on -one. 1,570 points in his career coming into the day. Third already in Eastern Washington history. Grabs a rebound here. And here you'll see exactly. He'll get a rebound, bring it right up. He's not going to give that thing up unless you force him to. That was a good job by Trey Birch Manning doing just that. Davison curling around. Tyler Agadorn got over there to get a hand up, change that shot. That great defensive presence inside. Harold Hurst all alone and a great find from Trey Birch Manning. This USD team, one thing they really pride themselves on on the offensive end is sharing the basketball. And you see it right there. That's a great bounce pass to an open teammate. Outs lead the Summit League with 16.1 assists per game coming into today. Actually among the best in the country in that department. Top 15 entering the week. Well, the thing that's really impressive, too, is just how well they do taking care of the basketball versus the assists. And South Dakota, one of the best in the country, that assist-to-turnover ratio. And that's a ratio that coaches really do track and love to follow. Ray Birch Manning doesn't shoot a lot of threes, but it didn't look like it there as he rolls it through the cylinder. Ray Birch Manning, five early points for the Kyles. Pick it up where he left off during a solid second-half effort against Drake on Wednesday night. Yeah, had 17 points in that game and was extremely efficient, shooting the ball seven of nine. And if South Dakota gets Trey Birch Manning going along with what Matt Moody and Tyler Hagedorn have been doing. Tristan Simpson, we mentioned him in the open too. I mean, those guys all are very capable scorers. Shot clock winding down again here for Perry. Under five, Blizznook with it now, guarded by Simpson. Pulls up for three and did not get ironed. Another good defensive effort there for the Coyotes. Jay, when you're coaching and you're trying to scheme against really slowing down a great offensive player like Blizznook, there's a couple ways you can do it. You stick a guy on him, you say, we're not going to switch off him, but we're really going to help or you can switch a lot of stuff, and that's what USD's doing so far. They're just switching and really making life difficult for him. Tristan Simpson got the tail end of that assignment on that last possession. He had a difficult job last Wednesday as well against Reed Timmer, and handled that very well. Kyle, it's very complimentary of his effort all the way around on Wednesday night. Kyle, it's off and running here early in Vermillion. They lead Eastern Washington with 15.54 to go first half. 9-2 Kyle. Billionauto.com, keys to the game now. Well, teams that are going to play well offensively have good rhythm, and by that we mean they're sharing the basketball, they're moving it quickly. South Dakota, when they have been playing their best this season offensively, that's how they have played. A game can always come down to extra possessions as two. We're talking about rebounds, turnovers, which team gets more shots. 
And then we've already highlighted that both these teams have dynamic scores on their team, Jay. I think a team that can get the supporting cast to come along their leading score will really be in charge here today. We'll see how that goes. That's something in talking to the Tau coaching staff. They've really been trying to develop as this season has gone on over the first month. Inside, poked away by Mooney, and the Coyotes force a turnover right out of the timeout. Leading 9-2. Here's Mooney back the other way, stolen away by Blizna. Perry got his hand in there first. All the way to the rim, and that's a tough finish over the 6'10", Tyler Hagedorn. Yeah, Blizna did not shy away, even though he was giving up four inches there. Took it right at Hagedorn's chin and finished. Teams trade turnovers. Eastern Washington cuts the deficit to five here in the early going. Ray Birch Manning has five already for South Dakota. Kicks it out. Carlton Hurst left it short. Again in transition. This time the finish goes for Ty Gibson, the junior guard out of Asakwa, Washington. His first bucket of the afternoon, and it's 9-6. Sometimes just that missed shot and how it comes off helps the other team get going. That happened that time, but nice pass there by Mooney. Carlton Hurst been the benefactor of a couple of nice passes down on the inside lays it in he's got four or excuse me he's got six so all 11 points between him and Trey Birch Manning right now for South Dakota Eastern Washington's credit they've been making life tough for Mooney to even catch the ball they've been denying him really hard Wisnuk trying to post up inside against Tristan Simpson right now Jesse Hunt the 6'7 Australian tried the three Ray Birch Manning, though, unforced air coming back the other way. And another turnover for the Kyles. Nick Fuller and Nick Peterson, or excuse me, Tyler Peterson, back into the game, or into the game for the first time today. Benzel will sit for Eastern Washington. And you see a seven-footer out now. They've got some size out there, do the Eagles. Grace Sionis, transfer, graduate transfer from UNC Charlotte, also spent some time at Auburn. Played high school ball at Finley Prep. People in the state of South Dakota well aware of that program, thanks to the Mike Miller Classic. Yeah. He's got size inside. He's trying to post right now. And inside, Nick Fuller trying to check him. That's the matchup right there. And Fuller got whistled that time, Jay, for an arm in the back. First team foul for South Dakota. First personal for Fuller. Well, Eastern Washington really needs a guy like Gracie Onis to be a presence inside because they don't have a lot of interior scoring. They'll put Blizznook down there and try to post him with some mismatches, but they don't have a lot of post scoring. And that's one of the reasons this team has struggled shooting the basketball this year, quite frankly. They shoot 39% because they shoot a lot of jumpers. Ten again. Gibbs is catch and shoot. And Gracie Onis reached over the back of Matt Mooney, and that'll be his first personal. Good block out by Nick Fuller and Matt Mooney, and that's what you got to do when you're going against size here. You see Fuller inside there, and he had the interior position, did a good job just holding him off. It was Fuller, not Mooney, which makes a lot more sense. A couple of grad transfers on the floor. Mooney, first shot attempt of the day. He's up a little bit short off the front iron. Manning almost got the steal. Tyler Peterson finishes it off. And Jesse Hunt gives a big bear hug to number 22 to pick up his first personal. That was great help defense that time by Trey Birch Manning. Good recognition of who had the basketball there for Eastern Washington. And that was Blizznook, their leading scorer. And so he was right there on the help as shutting down that driving lane, then ended up forcing the steal. These teams averaging about 12 turnovers per game, Brad. Three for Eastern Washington here in the early going. Two for South Dakota. Shot from Tyler Peterson rolls off. Now it's got off to a 9-2 start in this game. It's gone a little quiet on the offensive end here. Forcing Eastern Washington to use a lot of clock here, and that results ultimately in another turnover. Jesse Hunt walked with it. You've got 6'7 out there in Hunt. You've got seven foot with Gracie Onis. I 
like how active USD's been on this end of the floor. That they've had great spacing, good ball movement, good player movement early in this game. Manning to the rim, tried to go over Hunt. And Hunt stood in there strong. It's a good defensive stand there. On this end, USD's played a kind of a pack-in defense, which is what they typically want to play and want to make you score over them and be in good rebounding position, like they were right there. Got Graciones to leave his feet. Tried to make up for it. And he picks up the foul. Fuller will be at the free throw lane when we come back. 11-6, Kyle Turley. Talk a lot about the matchup individually. Uh, although they're not necessarily facing off one-on-one. -on -one, Bogdan Bliznik and Matt Mooney, you look at their numbers coming in. Both guys on the Lou Henson Award watch list at the beginning of the season. And rightfully so. I mean, these guys are big time scorers for their teams, big time leaders for their teams, and they're going to have the ball in their hand a lot when the, their teams really need buckets. And Wiznik off to a good start. He's hit two of his first three. Mooney a little bit quieter. He's only taken one shot. And Eastern Washington, in my opinion, has done a good job really trying to take him away and, and limit his looks early on by denying him the basketball. And that's sometimes what you got to do, Jay. You want to slow down a star player, just keep the basketball out of his hands. And Eastern Washington's done a pretty good job of that so far, but USD still with the lead here. Extra attention is not something that Matt Mooney is unaccustomed to, so figured it out a lot last year. Exactly. And you got to imagine it's, it's going to happen more often than not. Still found a way to average 16 points per game coming into this afternoon. Two free throws for Nick Fuller stretches that lead back to seven for South Dakota. Lizna, dangerous pass. Davison pulls up for three. Offensive board and a putback for Jesse Hunt. You saw the veteran presence there, Bliznuk. He got double teamed in the corner, Jay, but didn't panic. And once he got the basketball out of there, USD just couldn't rotate fast enough to clear up the board. Well, Matt Mooney now not on the floor for USD. Let's see how they respond offensively. Nice curl there. Curling around Tyler Peterson and Tristan Simpson found him. Simpson leading the Summer League with 45 assists coming into the day. Picks up another one right there. He's really just done a great job taking over the starting point guard role this year for USD. Of course, played a lot of minutes last year, but came off the bench primarily. Perry adds space, knocks it down from the top of the key. First points of the afternoon for the freshman. Jack Perry out of Melbourne, Australia. 6 275 pounds. Made his first career start at San Francisco. The loss the other night for the Eagles. Had six points, six rebounds, two assists, and 35 minutes of action. Fuller looked to answer for the, for the Coyotes, but it off the mark. There, using that ball screen very effectively and then changing directions off of it. Foul on the floor. Whistle against Tyler Hagedorn, his first, second team foul. We're halfway through this first half, 15-11 Coyotes. Led by as many as seven a couple of different times so far. Now Craig Smith's group has continued this year to be just really solid on the defensive end. And they've got a, a, a stiff test here today against uh, Eastern Washington against slowing down a great player in Bliznuk. But you, know, you look at what USD's done so far. They've held their teams, their opponents to 40% shooting. That's a great defensive field goal percentage. But it's more than that, Jay. It's also what you can do on the rebounding. Because if you're getting, getting stops and getting teams to miss shots, you still got to finish it with the board. And USD's been just superb there as well. They've been out rebounding their opponents all year long. And those two things combined would have led to a lot of success for this squad this year. Delay here as they try to get the shot clock figured out after that foul from Hagedorn. Remaining non-conference schedule, big three-game road trip coming up for the Cows. As we said earlier, Brad, have already played at TCU, at Duke, and they've got to go at UCLA coming up on December 19th. First, though, trip to Northern Arizona. This 
coming up this week, Thursday night. We had San Jose State on the 17th, then that date with the Bruins on the 19th. So round out the pre-conference schedule here at home on December 21st against an NAIA opponent, Northland College. I'm excited about the next two games because when you look at USD's non-conference schedule, and today's another good point of this here, is that you know they've had some games where they've had to play some really good competition, and they've had a few NAIs on there too. But I think the mid-major matchups are where you really get to see the quality of what USD's is and how good they could potentially be heading into the Summit League season. That's going to be a tough road swing. Northern Arizona, San Jose State, a couple tough places to go play. Lizda. Waited, finally pulled the trigger, but rims off. Kyle's come back the other way. But if you're USC, that's what you want to hope for. Contested jump shots by Bliznik, where you got guys in rebounding position. And Fuller driving in, going up over the top. Now the outstretched arms of Jesse Hunt. How about the play of Fuller of late? You can tell he's getting more and more comfortable now playing in this system. Again, this is just his first year in the Kyo program as a grad transfer. And he's a veteran guy. I mean, he's been around, played at Nebraska, got 55 games to his credit while he was with the Huskers, but didn't play a whole lot of meaningful minutes. And when you take that much time off, Brad, and then yeah. are thrust into a role in which you're going to be very valuable to a team, uh, there's going to be an adjustment period. And that's what the coaches have been kind of waiting for him to get up to speed on some things. And clearly, over the last couple of weeks, he's arrived. Yeah, he's averaging 13 points in his last three games. And he's been a nice spark for them offensively off the bench. Christian Simpson shakes off Blizzard, dumps it inside for Hagedorn, and another assist for Tristan Simpson. Well, that's where Simpson's so valuable. When he can get that dribble penetration, the defense has to come and stop him because he's a respected scorer now. He showed that. Their last game against Drake, and then he can dump it. Tracy Onis. Tyler Hagedorn standing strong. Gonna get called for a body foul here. That'll be his second. That's a tough call to go against Hagedorn. And what the officials calling there is they're saying Hagedorn stepped into the defense. We'll have to see here. He's leaning on him. Pretty good there. And see that little yep. step into the defense. And I know. You know, sometimes when you're watching it from our normal TV angle, you don't see that, but that's what the officials saw there. Gibson checks back into the lineup for Eastern Washington, replacing Davison. Racionis will come off for Richard Polanco. True freshman out of the Dominican Republic. Played some prep school ball here in the United States before joining the Eastern Washington program. That's a kid, though, a lot of versatility in his game. Ligon says, you know, this is a guy that at 6'8 has the ability to play anywhere one through five. Yeah, I think once they get him a little more experience under his belt, that's him with the basketball at the top. He could be a definitely a formidable weapon for them on the offensive end. Just like any freshman, that takes some time. That's the hunt driving in on Trey Birch Manning. Trey Birch Manning might have gotten yeah, away with a foul the there. Got him on the arm, it looked like. I mean, Matt Mooney's still not back in the game yet for USD here. Offensively, they haven't missed him much, though, because they continue to move well and share the ball well in this game. Birch Manning comes right back, draws the foul from Hunt. And Jay, as I watch a lot of college basketball, it's refreshing almost to watch this USD team play offensively because I don't know, you turn on a lot of college basketball and it's a lot of one guy at the basketball, a lot of ball screen action, letting one guy try to do something. I love how this USD team moves without the basketball. I mean, they are a tough guard. You really have to be ready to move, get through screens, communicate defensively, and if you don't do that well, USD, they'll find a crack in your D and they'll make you pay. The balance is reflected in their numbers offensively. You look at this guy uh, across the team. Of course, you have Mooney averaging 16 points. You've got Hagedorn at just under 14 a game. Birch Manning around eight. Simpson, nine. First seven. I mean, it's just yeah. any which way you turn, there's a guy who can contribute. And a lot of value in, in, in having different guys who can step up on any given night. Because there's going to be a lot of days where teams are going to try to take Matt Mooney out of the mix. They're going to have to figure it out offensively. And that's what we're seeing so far. I mean, Eastern Washington's done that. Mooney hasn't scored in this game, but USD's got a nice lead. And he wasn't the leader in that department on Wednesday either. It was Tristan Simpson. 
foul for Nick Fuller, and he'll head to the free throw line. Well, USD's been clicking offensively because they've been sharing the basketball, getting themselves some open looks from the three. Boy, Matt Moody being unselfish. Coyote Basketball on Midco Sports Network is presented by Vern ID Motor Cars and Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. 7.38 to go first half. Nick Fuller steps to the free throw line for the Coyotes. Trying to add to a nine point lead, largest of the half for this point for South Dakota. Fuller's three of three at the free throw line to start. And USD's got great balance all the way up and down their lineup in this game, scoring and, and doing it without Matt Mooney, who hasn't gotten a bucket yet in this game. Throw a little pressure off the inbound this time. Six points for Fuller off the bench. Three guys in this South Dakota lineup now with six points. Freyberg, Manning, and first the others. Side Peatling over the top of Fuller, and it a little too strong. Eastern Washington have struggling to get the ball to the basket right now. That's been the story for them this season. Again, they shoot just 39% on the year, and that's bottom 20 in the country. So shooting and making buskets has been tough. Tristan Simpson with a nice find again to Matt Mooney. First bucket of the afternoon for Matt Mooney. You bring up that 39%, Brad, and the irony there is that South Dakota has been holding its opponents to 39%. Yeah. That's not a number you see normally, as you said earlier, in men's basketball a whole lot. That's a pretty good percentage defensively, though. It is, yeah. I mean, you think that you could do that game in, game out, and we'll see for USD if that can continue. The stats may be a slightly skewed by playing a few NAI schools, but you also got to remember that USD's played Duke and TCU in right. there too, so. Perry finds Peatling. Mr. Washington back into the scoring column. Oh, that time Fuller got a little outside his game there, putting it on the deck and nowhere to go. Lisna dribbled around three guys and lays it in. Craig Smith, a quick timeout with 6-12 to play in the half. Dan Jack checks into the lineup for South Dakota. Craig Smith's looking for teachable moments. And what he's going to talk about right there, that last possession, again, he said, I'm saying Fuller got a little outside himself putting it on the deck, and then what that does, Jay, you force a turnover there, and that makes your defense have to scramble, and USD really never got matched up there. And You get Bliznuk that opportunity, he's going to make you pay. Well, Craig Smith. Off to a great start in his coaching career, no doubt, here at South Dakota. Won 17 and 16 in his first year. Knew things were going to take a little bit of a step back. That was an expected drop-off. Still won 14 games in year number two. And, of course, year number three put it all together. Won the Summit League regular season tournament after a 22 and 12 finish. They were 12 and 4 in the Summit League. To win the regular season crown, of course, went to the NIT by way of an automatic berth. And a loss to Iowa in the first round. It's their second postseason appearance at the Division I level. To, off to another great start exactly this year as well. what I was going to say. They're off to a, just a fantastic start this year, 8-3. and three. Offensive foul away from the basketball. Whistle against Carlton Hurst. First personal for Hurst, fourth team foul. South Dakota again shows a little pressure coming back. Tyler Peterson will replace Hurst. And what I've observed from South Dakota in their early season here, Jay, too, is this is a squad that's, you know, they're, they're playing at a very high level this early in the season compared to where a lot of their peers are at. It's because they have so much veteran leadership back. Late foul call there as Peatling unable to convert the lay-in. Dan Jeck picks up the personal. Peatling will go to the free throw line. That whistle came late. It did come late. And maybe a little bit of a touch foul there, but this is one thing that, you know, the officials are actually trying to do this a little bit more and more. And I kind of agree with it is if that's gonna be a made basket, let's just go the other way. And then if it's not, you know, then they're gonna call a foul. And I know some people would argue, well, it's a foul or it's not a foul. You know, you call it, but. It's kind of one of those balances. The, they're trying to keep the game moving a little bit, not have to blow the whistle as much. 
But there probably was some contact there that needed to be called. D3 coming back, Tyler Peterson. Pete Lee's been active here since he's come back on the floor. Now he's a kid from Australia, sophomore, that's posting up inside. Again, Eastern Washington is just searching right now for some other scoring to go along with what Blizna gives this team. And Peetling's another one of those guys that could be that because he's versatile, he's athletic, he just kind of lacks some strength to be banging inside a whole lot. And Jack picks up his second foul yeah. in as many trips and right back to the bench for him, Austin Sparks. Boy, up to that point, you looked at South Dakota had done a great job defending in this half without fouling. Still just only 16 fouls in this half for the Coyotes. Peatling, good look, Polanco. Nice find for Peatling, but it rolls off the rim. Those are the shots that Eastern Washington, they need to start making those looks because it's tough to get really clean looks in a Division I game, and they had a great one there and didn't get to go. Well, jumper well short from Simpson. And it's out of bounds off the Coyotes. And Eastern Washington comes away with a basketball. Well, this game's definitely got a little different vibe to it than the last one here, Jay, against Drake, where both teams were just on fire offensively in the first half. And USD's still shooting 50% in this half. They've had some turnovers of late that have started to hamper them. up Blizda. Working on Tyler Peterson. Peatling stepping outside. The big fella knocks it down. Seven points for him in this half. To lead Eastern Washington. Austin Sparks tried to help on Blizda at that time and just was late recovering. Eagles as close as they've been in a while. Down just four. Dumped off from Simpson to Austin Sparks and he's hammered by Polanco's. Sparks turns a couple of free throws here. I think Sparks got away with a travel there, but good find again by Simpson. Boy, he is so adept at drawing defense to him, Jay, and then still seeing through that to find open teammates and then delivering the ball. I mean, I think as we watched Simpson last year, I mean, you just saw him blossoming as a player as the year went on to you know, at the end of the year, even though he wasn't starting, I mean, he had the full confidence of Craig Smith and crunch minutes. He was the guy out there running the point. Free throw attempt, seven and eight there for Austin Sparks. Makes them both. But, yeah, down the stretch of that season, there was no question in crunch time who this coaching staff trust, trusted to run the offense. It was Tristan Simpson, which tremendous compliment to a true freshman. Yeah. He played in North Star High School in Lincoln, Nebraska. He played in a lot of big-time games. Played on the AU circuit. Certainly played against high-level competition in his high school days before coming here. But you never know what you're truly going to get as a out of a freshman when you're a coach recruiting them when they get there. But Simpson, I think, had to say exceeded expectations last year. And now to be where he's at now as a sophomore is just fabulous. Foul was called against Tyler Peterson, by the way. Gibson hit the first to earn the bonus. Eastern Washington hasn't put any pressure on USD a lot in the backcourt yet, but that's something that they've got in their repertoire. You know, their last game at San Francisco a few nights ago, they trailed big time at the half, started pressing in the second half, and they got them back in the game. So they, they, it's something they can do if they need to. Simpson has missed his first three shots here today. Remember, seven of eight from the floor in that 18-point effort against Drake on Wednesday night. It's Blizna, and it's Peterson. One-on-one, -on -one, under 10 to shoot for Gibson. Peterson's done a nice job checking him here. He's going to have to do it late shot clock. Step back, 16-footer, and rolls off. Simpson grabs the board. Nice job by Tyler Peterson using his size, contesting the shot without fouling. Mooney, pull up three off the mark. 
Good hustle there from Austin Sparks. Keep the play alive. Oh, that's what Craig Smith wants to see out of Sparks. He's getting some minutes here because of foul trouble that USD's in at the post. Simpson goes right around the defense and lays it in. Peatling tried to get over to help and just a little bit tardy. First field goal of the afternoon for Tristan Simpson. Good skip pass there by the Eagles. Fuller got a piece of it, and Blizna got it back. He's fouled on the putback. He will be at the free throw line. When we come back, Tristan Simpson lays it in to give the Coyotes a six-point lead. Coming up at the half here on Minto Sports Network, we're going to sit down with University of South Dakota Athletic Director David Herbster to talk about an exciting announcement involving USD Athletics and the Dakota Dome specifically that came out this week. Highlight stats and scores and a look around the Summit League as well. All that coming up at the half here this afternoon. Bogdan Bliznik to the free throw line. He got off to a good start in this game. He's been quiet, Brad, of late. It's the first of two. They hit two of his first three shots and really had a nice rhythm going. And then I think South Dakota really started becoming more focused on helping on him and then has just gone one for his last five since. Denzel. Come in to grab Polanco. Jay, this is an Eastern Washington team we talked in the open about. Boy, the schedule they've had to play. They've only played one home game out of their nine games. That was a non-D1. Peterson dumps it off, and an easy finish for Austin Sparks. Again, the sharing continues out here on the floor for the Coyotes. And USD was ready that time for the press after the free throw. Benzo comes back with a three for the Eagles, and they're within three, as close as they've been for most of this first half. Outs have led by as many as nine. Check that. They've actually led by as many as 13 in this first half. But here over the last few minutes, it's been Eastern Washington that's held the momentum. Now, and the big thing is Eastern Washington kind of started settling defensively, getting a few stops and some rebounds. You've been playing on the road as much as this group has. You've seen it all. And so you, you really, in a lot of ways, have nothing to lose. This Blizna, nice finish there. This is an Eastern Washington team, quite frankly, Jay, that's trying to build towards the big sky season here and, and trying to get the momentum turned the right way before they enter that. Austin Sparks. Replaced by Trey Birch Matting. The turnover for South Dakota, their fifth of the first half. Craig Smith's kind of had to play a little bit of a different lineup than he wanted to just because Tyler Hagedorn and Dan Jack both with two fouls. And he's just going to go small here, I think, to finish this thing out. Eastern Washington a chance to take the lead for the first time today. Unable to do it, though, with Ty Gibson. Fuller with a nice finish. In the inside, Nick Fuller's had a nice first half off the bench. Eight points on three of four, of two of three from the field. Also has those four free throws. Yeah, he's just picking up where he left off here again. He's played really well the last couple weeks for this USD team. Benzel, same spot. This time it won't go, and a reach over the top from Mason Peatling. And that's his first. Ninth team foul. South Dakota will shoot a one and one. Carl Hurst back into the game, replacing Tyler Peterson. A big front end of a one and one here because you don't want to come up empty missing this if you're USD. If you do, it's almost like a turnover here because you were going to get the basketball on that possession. Some big free throws here by Fuller, who's been there a lot already today. And he misses the front end. Well, there you go. Eastern Washington does get that extra possession. First miss at the free throw line today for Fuller. Lisnick, though, leaves the shot short. Nick Fuller called for an offensive foul coming back as he ran into Cody Benzel.
second foul for Fuller. Timeout for Eastern Washington with 30.9 seconds remaining here in this first half. And as we mentioned earlier, Eastern Washington in the midst of a huge road trip so far this season. They've gone 36 straight days, or at least they will by the end of it. Ten games without a home game. In that span, they will have traveled over 8,000 miles. Brad mentioned the home game against the non-D1 Walla Walla. They won that the first night out, and they went to Washington, to Stanford, and to UNLV. Played in a an exempt tournament against Georgia State and Eastern Kentucky, and then went to Utah, Seattle, San Francisco. Here today, and then on Tuesday night, they will visit the University of Wyoming before finally getting home on December 17th to take on CSU Northridge. Simpson nearly gets the turnover there. About a four second difference between the shot clock and the game clock here. 15 to shoot. Lizna dumps it back inside to throw down for Peatley. Kyle can take the final shot here with Matt Mooney. Step back three for Mooney. Off the mark. Perry's going to heave it up at the horn. But it won't get close in South Dakota, which led by as many as 13 in that first half, protecting a one-point lead as we go to the break. Craig Smith is with Brad Newitt. Craig, you had to weather some foul trouble there from your big. Seemed like your team lost some offensive rhythm because of that. How do you get that back? Yeah, I just feel like we're playing really selfish on offense, not sharing the ball. We scored, we're, it was nine to two at the first media timeout. And since then we've scored 23 points and they're playing well, but a lot of our stuff is self-inflicted and we have a bench for a reason. So guys get in foul trouble and other guys got to be ready to play. And we certainly weren't ready to play as a team. All right, well, good luck in the second half getting that turned around. All right, thanks. All right, Craig Smith and the Coyotes leading it 32-31 over Eastern Washington here at the half. We'll be back to the Sanford Coyotes Sports Center with Athletic Director David Herbster right after this. Welcome back in. College Basketball Live sitting here with a few ACC coaches. There's one first-time head coach in this group, David Padgett. When, when some assistants, most assistants, get a head coaching job, it happens in April. You got yours in October. How would you assess the challenges of getting your team ready for the season in the preseason? I don't know if we have enough time to talk about the challenges <laughs> we face, but, uh, you know, the good news about the team I inherited uh, we have a, a very good mix of older players who've played college basketball, seniors, juniors, even a sophomore and VJ King. And we have a very talented freshman class. Obviously, they're freshmen. There's a lot they need to learn and go through. And there's no easy way to get freshman experience except to let them go through it. But our older guys have been tremendous in trying to help the younger guys and get ready for the season. So just each practice, we're just trying to get better than we were the day before. You had a little more lead time when you stepped over from an assistant to replacing John Calipari there at, at Memphis. What advice would you, would you give him stepping in, although the time frame is a little bit different? No, David's going to do a great job, and he's a basketball guy, and his dad was a really good coach as well, too, and, and so he's going to do great. And, um, you know, they're, they're good. Their team's really good. And, you know, following – you know, with Coach Patino, and you know when I took over at Memphis, following Couch, uh, Coach Calipari, it's just they're hard to do because you know the success that you're following in those, in both guys. So you just do the best you can. It was a primary head coaching job there at Memphis. You're just getting started, Mike. Reflect on, on what what it was. You're at the pinnacle now, the coaching in the ACC. Reflect to your first head coaching job when you slid into that chair and had that ownership maybe an overwhelming feeling what was that like i think it was i remember my first year at the university of delaware in 1995 i i wasn't very trusting of delegating i tried to do everything and a little too much i've learned to delegate more but i think the biggest thing is you try to be yourself you know you've worked for a guy you've been with a head coach i think to develop your own identity and be yourself as soon as you can get confident doing that's going to be helpful jim 
What was yeah, that like? My, my first head coaching job was at a Division II school called American International College in Springfield, Massachusetts. And um, recruiting there was very, very difficult. But we spotted a young man I thought could really turn our program around. His name is Rick Carlisle. And we tried to recruit <laughs> Rick Carlisle to a Division II school. <laughs> Two years later, I was the assistant at Virginia, and uh, Rick called me. He was playing at the University of Maine, and he transferred to Virginia, helped us get to the Final Four, and now has been in the NBA since 1984. So when you're looking at players and trying to build a program, you got to find good players. Rick was a good player. We just couldn't get him to AIC. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you are. You might be someplace soon that you can actually get him. Buzz, your, your first head coach. Yeah, what was I, that like? I remember it vividly. Uh, very honored, grateful, uh, bigger than any dream I'd ever had. Was very thankful that the University of New Orleans would hire me and uh, have felt that way every day over the last 11 years. Brad? Yeah, I was very blessed. Uh, I took over at uh, UNC Wilmington, having been an assistant there for eight years under a very good coach and Jerry Wainwright. So the program was in, in a great situation. We had good players coming back, a good foundation. We'd been to the tournament. And so really the, the ease of transition for me was, was much easier than most in that I, I already knew the league, I knew the university, uh, and Coach Wainwright had given me a ton of responsibility, so that really gave me a lot of confidence. You mentioned getting to uh, the NCAA tournament, and when you're at maybe a, a lower level or a mid-major school, it's, getting to the tournament's a great accomplishment. When you're in the ACC, it's not just getting to the tournament, it's making a run. You could have a great year, maybe even win a championship in the league, but you don't get to the second weekend, and uh, it's almost forgettable in some fans' eyes. How do you guys self-assess when it comes to success relative to the NCAA tournament, whether it's getting there or advancing deep? Well, for me, I mean, I, I've tried to be better uh, just about your own personal success and what you define it as. I think when I, my time at Memphis, uh, I, was just, I was really unhealthy uh, mentally, uh, and and just because I, I lived and died by every single game, and I, I, so when I came to Georgia Tech, I tried to have a better perspective on things, and and it's a work in progress. Uh, it's hard to get to the tournament. I mean, I thought we had a good year last year, and we finished 11th place in this league, and I mean, so and we had eight wins in the league. I don't know if we'll ever get eight wins again in this league. I mean, it's hard to do, and so, you know, if you you just do the best you can. I've tried to be better about that, and focusing on just doing the best you can and let the chips fall where they fall. Now, as, a, as a player, obviously, you want to get as deep as you can. What about as a coach? How do you – he said when he started out, he didn't have a healthy perspective. You're just starting out. What's your perspective? Well, I think at Louisville, it's, it's just been long established that getting to the tournament, per se, isn't enough. I think making a deep run is, has come to be expected over the last 15, 16 years, and obviously we've had a lot of success. Now, I'm not going to put any pressure on myself or on my team to say, hey, we have to get to the Elite Eight or we have to get to the Final Four because that's just not realistic. You know, everything we've been going through, me as a first-time head coach, that wouldn't be fair to anybody. So we're just trying to have as good of a season as we can have, win as many games as we can have, kind of just break up into three segments. you got non-conference, you've got conference, and then postseason. So just take it one segment at a time. How does that change as you get deeper into your career? Because when we refer to you guys, how many Final Fours does he have? How many national championships? Well, that dynamic happened a little bit this year for us. We, the two previous years we've been to the Elite Eight, we get knocked out in the second round by a very good West Virginia team. But we got, we finished in the top four of the regular season and got to the championship game of the ACC tournament. And so I was trying to tell our guys that, you know, we had a pretty good run and, and even uh, it was even harder trying to explain that to my fans. But maybe they finally got it at the end of the day. <laughs> what about you, you made a deep run with George Mason. Now here you are at Miami. Yeah. 20 years ago, I had an incredible opportunity to talk to the great John Wooden, who won 10 national championships. And he talked about one thing that you had to have to be successful as a coach. And he said, you have to have balance. You have to have the understanding of what your expectations are, maybe very different than what anybody else is. And you just have to have that balance in your life, balance with your team so that you're enjoying the journey. Not so much talking about, did you make the final four? So, uh, and that's the way we've tried to approach it. We just want to be the best we can be every season we're competing. Uh, last thing, Buzz, it's validation though, right? I mean, NCAA tournament, that's a, that's a thing you can sink your teeth into. I think it just depends on what validation and who you're wanting the validation from. Uh, not trying to be holier than now. I like playing in the NCAA tournament because that means I have an extended period of time with our players each day. 
And so whether we win, whether we get there, I think that's for other people to judge. I think my responsibility as a leader is to help them grow to be the best people they can be. And if that means we play a couple extra games, maybe that time period helps them even more. And Brad, you've had a taste of it there at Clemson. Yeah, yeah, we haven't been in a while and certainly something that we want to get back to. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, playing in March with a chance to advance. That's kind of a phrase we use to, to, to kind of keep our momentum going. And I think it's something that you put the NCAA tournament out there, it's not as easy at some programs. It's more, it's more of a challenge. And uh, certainly you analyze each team and, and just try to get better working on that with that, that thought in mind for us. Yeah. Good perspective, guys. We'll wrap it up when we return. These guys have left uh, quite a mark on their teams. What about the, the digital footprint, social media? Get into that for a few minutes, guys. All right, let's start with your health. Yeah. You know, you're 70, and yeah. a lot of people want to ask, how, how much longer yeah. do you want to go? Do you want to ask that? Yeah, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you, how much longer right. do you want to go? Yeah, I want to. Uh, I didn't get my knee replaced to retire. Let's put it that way. So I'm 70 years old. I think I'm definitely younger at heart. Uh, I have the knowledge, though, of a 70 year old who's coached for 42 years and has coached 11 years with the U.S. team. And I still I think that's a, a good combination, especially at a great school. I want to make a difference. I'm enthusiastic. Come on, Kyle, I got you. Grayson Allen, when describing you, called you a friend. Yeah. Which is interesting for a 21-year-old to call a 70-year-old a friend. Right. How do you think you've been able to connect with players these days and change and, and be able to adapt? Well, I think it's up to the teacher to adapt so that his or her teachings are accepted easier by their pupils. I've had to adapt a lot. Not values, work ethic, and all that, but how you communicate, how you dress, what jokes you tell, do you stay current. Grayson Allen is a really good basketball player. He also appears to be a dirty basketball player. Well, his reputation for this precedes him. What gives you confidence that, that Grayson, if you have confidence, that Grayson has kind of gotten past the, the issues, the tripping issues, any, any Yeah, can... well, you know, it, it, look, there's no, it, is it more tripping issues or what everyone made of, of a couple ish, issues? I want Grayson to be Grayson. Grayson's, a, I think, as good a player as there is in the country. And uh, I want him to be a leader, and I want him to not have a rear view mirror. How much did you worry about him last year, though, because of all the public outcry uh, and the attention that he got. How much were you worried that he'd be yeah. able to handle it all? You would have thought that there was a capital offense that had occurred. That's the attention I think that our program brings, the scrutiny, and you know you have to learn to live under that microscope. But he has had an opportunity to be in incredible situations where you don't play at the beginning of your freshman year. You are the hero of the national championship game. You're an All-American as a sophomore and you have an incident and then that's unbelievably publicized. And then you have another situation and then you're hurt the whole year. Holy mackerel. He's lived a lifetime in those three years and I, I think it'll all uh, end up you know, really, really good. How good can this team be? I mean, you have talent, you've got bigs. They're very different than a lot of your previous teams. Yeah, you know, our team is going to be very much a developing team. We have three guys in Marvin Bagley, Wendell Carter, and Marquise Bolden who are going to be pro players, maybe all three of them at the end of this year. We don't have the perimeter depth that we, you know, like the last few years, but we have more big guys. And so we have to adjust what we do, uh, and which we do every year. As you Outlook of recruiting one that's changed. People think it has. No, no. I, you know, everyone talks about us changing our recruiting philosophy. That's that. That's not the case. You know, it's just that Grand Hill was in the mid '90s or early '90s. If Grand Hill was today, he'd go too. But we would have still recruited Grand Hill. You know, Leitner and Battier, and that's when it started for us with Elton Brand. But he was even here two years. I have not changed. The landscape has changed to where 
it would be the best decision for them to go, and then I'm okay with it. Tom Brady, the GOAT, greatest of all time. Let's go! And the Patriots look once again like they are the team to beat in the AFC. We got to set the edge over here and play with power inside. But this New England dynasty knows anything can happen when you come to the heat of Miami late this season. Monday Night Football, Patriots, Dolphins, tomorrow, 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. Are you ready? The prolific playmaker versus the SEC's top dog. The defending champs versus the avenging tide. Oklahoma, Georgia at 5 and Clemson, Alabama at 845. New Year's Day on ESPN. Thunder Pacers at 7. Hornets Rockets at 9.30. Wednesday on ESPN. Nick Young, you know, the Cavs-Warriors finals rematch is a gift to the world. I would like to return the favor, so tell Santa a few things you'd like for Christmas. I want a win. Okay, a triple sure. double will be great. At least 48 points. A clean block on LeBron. Oh, yeah. I'd like for you to take me to space. Oh, sounds fun. All right, well, we got you this gift card. Tom Brady, the GOAT, greatest of all time. Let's go! And the Patriots look once again like they are the team to beat in the AFC. We got to set the edge over here and play with power inside. But this New England dynasty knows anything can happen when you come to the heat of Miami late in the season. Monday Night Football. State, yep. Remember, Brad, we did that game. That was a one-point loss. It was. It was down to the last possession. That's the only loss that USD has suffered in this building since it opened last year. And this has been a great place for them offensively. See if they can get it going here in the second half. Tyler Hagedorn oh. somehow got that one to roll in. That got every piece of the rim, and gravity did the rest. That was a good set out of the half there, getting Mooney going right to the rim. Right back for Gibson, a three, and we're even up at 34 apiece. Hives have led pretty much the whole way here this afternoon, and a turnover right out of the gate here for Mooney. Bliznik looking to give Eastern Washington the lead for the first time. A good hustle back down the floor from Mooney. Yeah, that was. He didn't hang his head after turning it over. Manning shot blocked by Peatling, who's continued to have a good day here this afternoon. 24 on the shot clock, Tristan Simpson to inbound. You can see here, Birchmead taking it strong, but Peatling right there to deny it. Eastern Washington needs him as an interior defender in the rim. Peatling, 6'8", 220 pounds. A little bit of size advantage on Birch Manning. Hagedorn didn't get a lot of run in that first half due to foul trouble. Finds Trey Birch Manning. Craig wanted his team to be more unselfish here in the second half. He sees his eighth assist of the afternoon there from Birch Man or from Hagedorn to Birch Manning. Yeah, how great is it when you get your post player giving up the basketball as an assist guy? Beatling. And who will that be on? 25 is Tyler Hagedorn. That's number three. Good job here by Eastern Washington. Attack inside against Hagedorn with those fouls. And now, boy, Craig Smith's got a decision to make. Can you leave Tyler Hagedorn out there with three fouls? You hate to maybe disrupt your starting five here, and you want to try to get them going offensively. Hagedorn, this team's second leading scorer, Jay. Just two of two from the floor today. Four points, but the three fouls. Hasn't really had a chance to get going. Exactly. Craig Smith's seeing that and 
At this point, he's going to leave his big fella on the floor. Heatling into double figures. He's got 11 to lead all scores. This matches his season high, which he actually set in the game the other night against San Francisco. Nice find inside, Hagedorn. A couple of assists now, and a 1,000 points in his collegiate career for Matt Mooney. Again, started at Air Force, came here to South Dakota, and he's just over 200 here for the Coyotes to reach that milestone at USD as well. But a very prolific collegiate career and a nice accomplishment for Matt Mooney. If he keeps his current pace, he's going to be knocking on the door at 2,000 points. I don't know if he'll quite get there, but I mean, that's speaking a lot for a guy that's only going to play three years, and I'm talking about at USD scoring 2,000 points. He'll probably get there for his career. Remember, Mooney played as a freshman at Air Force, transferred, and in fact, I believe he had a red shirt and then played at Air Force. Oh, I've got that back. Yes. Yeah. Played as a freshman, red shirted here and then got the, his first action last year. All he did was set the fourth best yeah. <laughs> single season scoring mark. As a sophomore. As a sophomore. Yeah. Talking myself into a corner there. We got her all straightened out. Well, the bottom line is he's going to be one of the best players to ever wear a coyote uniform when this thing's all said and done, the way he's played. And it's something when you can say that, and he's about a third of the way through his junior year and didn't play here as a freshman. Kick ball is whistled against Eastern Washington. And Leggins and the Eagles show a little bit of pressure here off the inbound, but Tristan Simpson will walk it up. Craig Smith's not letting his team play with the freedom they had in the first half offensively. He's calling a little more sets, especially now that the ball's in front of their bench. Leggins wanted to travel whistled against Mooney. I was close on the handoff there, and then Mooney boy, really tried to force that pass. There was no way that thing was getting into Hagedorn, and USD fortunate to keep the ball. Referee's explaining that, that says Matt Mooney didn't have control. The ball was tipped out of his possession, which is why he did not get whistled for the travel. Agadorn, another find for Trey Birch Manning, and he gets the roll. Agadorn did just enough to draw some double team to him and then dumped it off. And USC getting easier shots here to start this half. They've hit four of their first six. Tyler now with as many assists as personal fouls in this game. Now Matt Mooney hustling into the Eastern Washington bench. Unable to save it. We'll stick with the Eagles, 16 on the shot clock, with Matt Mooney getting after the basketball here. Uh, he's got a knack for anticipating passes and using his size and his wingspan to get his hand on a lot of basketballs. Wide open look for Bliznik. Can't leave him. USD got confused on their double team rotation there, left the wrong guy open, and he made him pay. First basket of the second half for him. He's got 13 to retake the team lead. From Pete Link, catch and shoot for Mooney. That's a good look for Mooney. Coming off the screen, when he can step into that three like that, he's lethal. And again, gets his hand into the passing lane. Gibson was wide open over there in the corner. And so Mooney does well to knock that out of bounds. 22 on the shot clock. The reason Gibson's open is because Bliznik's drawing a lot of attention from USD's secondary defenders. So the guys that are off the basketball when he has it are really sagging and helping. It's Bliznik right there at the top. Foul called away for the ball on Peetling. Kyle's will have it when we come back. 15.59 to go. Start of the second half means it's time for our Subway Fresh Take. Both these teams have had portions of the game where they've had good offensive rhythm. USD started with it, then kind of lost it. Eastern Washington was the exact opposite. They kind of got it as the first half was going. The extra possessions have been pretty even, Jay. Seven turnovers apiece for these teams. And when it comes to the supporting cast, USD with a slight advantage there. They've got more production out of their bench. 
19 bench points for the Coyotes of the 42 that they have on the board right now. Coyotes get the basketball after the offensive foul was whistled against Pete Lane. He is off the floor now, which is significant because he's been one of the leaders offensively for the Eagles this afternoon. That was a big call because it could have gone against Tyler Hagenhorn or USC, and that would have been his four. And Craig Smith kind of rolling the dice, leaving his big fellow in there with three right now. Ray Birch Manning hit a three in the first half. This one comes up short. Well, what you could tell is Craig Smith wanted to give this starting five a significant run together because they really didn't have it a lot in the first half because of the foul trouble and just the way some things unfolded. Skips it over. Here's Blizznuk. He's guarded by Moody now. Deep three for Gibson. He can really shoot it. Hit one to start the second half. That one doesn't go. Yeah, he's their best three-point shooter. Takes about six attempts a game from deep. Mooney, little leaner. Drops it through. Matt Mooney with eight points now on the day. And the lead back to five for the Coyotes. Remember, Eastern Washington did have it tied up here. Early stages of the second half. Never did manage to take the lead. Coyotes haven't given that up all day. I think that's key when you're playing a team like Eastern Washington that's, quite frankly, had some struggles here of late. And Mooney with the steal, and now a foul whistled against Gibson as the Coyotes tried to run transition the other way. Now it's another great defensive effort there, and, and Bliznuk wasn't happy that there wasn't a foul call. But USD has been there as a team, really trying to shut down his driving lanes all game long. Shante Legan's trying to get an explanation of why that wasn't a foul on his star player as well here. Moving screen. Called on the handoff against yep. Tristan Simpson here. Now, this is an area that officials trying to clean up. When you set a ball screen, you got to stay stationary. When you do the handoff, it's like a ball screen there. And so you can't hand it off and then pivot into the defense like they used to let you do. That's what Simpson did that time. Take a look at the leading scores today for Eastern Washington. Liz Duck 13, Peatling 11. Travel call against Birch Manning. Kristen Simpson handed it off, or more appropriately left it for yeah. Birch Manning, who caught and ran with it a little too aggressively there. And that's a turnover that probably goes against Birch Manning, but really that's kind of on Simpson. Maybe in how he delivered the ball. Let me tell you, the last two possessions are uh, now three possessions in this game. All these coaches are going to go start going crazy with their teams. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to chuckle, but it's just the way that that last couple of trips down the floor have unfolded is, is a little comical. South Dakota led on the day by Trey Birch Manning with 10 points. Fuller and Mooney now eight apiece. Tyler Hagedorn. Tyler, you got to give him credit, Brad. He picked up that third foul with about 18 and a half minutes to play in the second half, and he's come out at three assists. And now a bucket. He's managed that situation pretty well. 13 37 to play in the ball game. Kyle's have stretched it back to a seven point advantage. Tyler Hagedorn knocks it down. He's got six on three of three. Sanford Orthopedics in Sports Medicine injury report. Logan Power out again today with that ankle injury. Suffered it in practice earlier this week. Talked to him myself uh, yesterday, and Logan said he's hoping to be back on the floor in a week. You know how those things go. Ankle yeah. sprains are, it's a case-by-case -case deal, and he's still hobbling pretty good. The good news is he's off the crutches that he had when we saw him here against in that Drake game on Wednesday night. Be another person that could really help the depth of USD's bench. He's a really valuable scout team guy as well. Kyle's you know, guy out there all the time. Maximum effort. Lizna. Nice set there. And Eastern Washington's got some really good sets they can go to to get Blisnook touches in the middle of the floor, Jay. And that's where 
It's a lot more difficult to bring your help defense from. And he took advantage that time. Moody fouled on the way up by Jesse Hunt. And that'll be number three on the junior out of Geraldton, Geraldton Australia. Yeah, once Mooney got past Hunt that time, he certainly had the advantage. Hunt trying to make a play from behind. You, that's usually when you're going to get called for those fouls. Coyotes haven't shot a ton of free throws today, Brad, but they've hit most of them. That's a, a, an area of the game that's improved markedly from a year ago for this team. 71.9% coming in. Second in the Summit League. Yeah. Remember last year they were at or near the bottom all year. Yeah, they were shooting mid-60s a lot of the year as a team. And quite frankly, it was a little bit of an Achilles heel, and you know where that shows up, and that's in those close games is when you start thinking about that a lot. Right, seven of nine on the afternoon after the two makes from Mooney. Tyler Hagenor just picked up his fourth foul. Trying to fight around the high side there and deny the pass into the post. See it from this angle here or not. And the officials are just calling the fact that he's trying to displace the offensive player there with his hip. And comes after we praised him for managing that three foul situation yeah. as well as he had, but picks up number four. Gracionis goes up and under the seven footer. Gets his first basket of the afternoon. Player that had been starting for Eastern Washington and kind of been relegated to the bench in the last couple games. Comes off here's Trey Birch Manning going at the seven footer and he's fouled. Birch Manning will go to the free throw line. Be the third personal on Gracionis. Craig Smith's gone with his starting five the entire half, with the exception of when Hagedorn just had just now fouled out. And you know, this group has responded well offensively. Hit six of their first ten shots here in this half and gotten to the foul line. Rich Matting misses the first. Matt Mooney will get a break, placed by Tyler Peterson. The one thing that South Dakota hasn't done in this game that they've done a good job of all year offensively, and that's really shoot the three. This team shoots almost 40% Jay from the three-point line. They're one of ten this afternoon. And you had, you know, three more made threes, and this is a different ball game. Another category, the Coyotes ranked near the top of the Summit League in. Back up the floor, Benzel with a deep three there, tried to lean into it. The offensive rebound, though, chased down by Hunt. Another chance here for the Eagles. Offensive rebound's been few and far between in this game for either team. Birch Manning guarding Blizznuk. Those two actually went to high school together, Brad. Very good friends. Talked to Trey about their relationship a little bit. Both of them recruited at least for a time by Eastern Washington during their high school days. More on that when we come back. Foul goes against Tristan Simpson. Timeout with 11.35 to go, 49-43 South Dakota. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Matt Mooney reaching the 1,000-point plateau for his collegiate career. That between Air Force and here at the University of South Dakota. Currently sixth in the Summit League in field goals, main fourth in total points. We talked about last year. 634 points, fourth best in South Dakota history this last year. He's a little over 200 points to reach 1,000 here with the Coyotes as well. Surely going to hit that before too long by the end of the year for sure. Barring injury or anything other like that that's unspeakable at this point. But Matt Mooney certainly been every bit the player they thought they were getting when he arrived on campus. Uh, you remembered hearing about him that year he was sitting out and Craig Smith would praise how good he looked, you know, running scout team and in practice. And well, he did not disappoint when he finally got a chance to play last year. Two free throws for Perry. Give him five in the afternoon. Tristan Simpson going at Polanco. Offensive rebound is controlled by Birch Manning and he's fouled by Bliznuk. And more on that situation, Brett, we talked about those two being high school teammates. Well, they were both recruited 
at least initially by Eastern Washington. And then Bliznuk ended up going there. Well, Trey took a, a year off of school before going to North Idaho, the junior college, for one season and coming here to South Dakota last year. They work out together in the summer, spend a lot of time with one another. And so kind of a cool opportunity yeah. here, given how far these two schools are apart, that they ended up on the same floor yet again. Yeah, I'm sure when they both saw the schedule coming out and they were going to play each other, they had to a smile and maybe a little competitive juices yeah. <laughs> flowing as well. Maybe a little talk between the two of them coming into this game. Blesnuk whistled for his first personal there and that'll put Nick Fuller on the free throw line. He's four of five on the afternoon. Blesnuk has not come off the floor for Eastern Washington. Snatches that board right there. Second front end now. Those two misses both in bonus situations for Nick Fuller. That's why this game is close, Jay. I mean, USD is shooting 12% better than Eastern Washington. Usually you have that big a difference, field goal percentage. You're going to have a little bigger lead, but USD's turned it over a little bit. They missed some front ends. And quite frankly, Eastern Washington beating them from the three-point line as well with five made threes to the USD one. Harry bricks that one. Had a foot on the line. Anyway, so it would have been a long two, but it's no good. Back come the Kyles. Here's Tyler Peterson. Driving on the baseline, leads it through. Peterson up and over, Gibson for the bucket. Tyler's got four points on the afternoon now. Craig Smith would take anything right now just to get this offense sparked after what they were doing a few nights ago. They put 93 on the board against Drake. Points have been a lot harder to come by. Carl Hurst reached in there, knocked that basketball away, forced another turnover. Tristan Simpson to Nick Fuller plus the foul. This is your defense creating offense, and Tristan Simpson. Foul goes against Polanco. That's a beautiful drop there. <laughs> Got a little no look at the end. 10-14 to play in the ball game. 53-45. South Dakota, Nick Fuller, chance at a three-point play out of the timeout. He's got 10 on the afternoon. Tristan Simpson now. Brad, just two points for him. Again, coming off a career-high tying 18 against Drake here in this building on Wednesday night. Four assists, though. So still doing his job yeah. as this team's point guard. And I think that's going to come and go a little bit with Simpson. What you hope for him offensively is when he has open looks, especially from the three-point line, that he's confident enough to step up and make those. But his main role, of course, is facilitator. So if he's having high assists, there's a pretty good chance that USD's playing well offensively, and when we've seen that here today, that's been the case. you got to love, though, what Nick Fuller has started to bring to this team. You mentioned he's got 10 points off the bench. He's really been the big bright spot for Craig Smith off the bench uh, in this game, in a, in a game where we saw the halftime interview with Craig Smith. He wasn't too happy with his bench in the first half and how they had performed, but Fuller stepped in. And they've really just gone with him here at the second half at the five spot. And they're able to get away with that because Eastern Washington really doesn't have a, a true post either. Fuller now into double figures for the third time in his last four games. Had double figures against UMKC and then at Duke. Had a career high 16 points. How about that? If yeah. <laughs> you close your career and your career high comes against the Duke Blue Devils at Cameron Indoor Stadium. 7 of 11 from the floor that day. Completes the three-point play here. He's got 11. And the Coyotes have their biggest lead of the second half, Brad, now at nine points. A chance here now. If you can start clamping down defensively if you're USD and maybe try to put this game out of reach here and, and take control of it, something the Coyotes really haven't been able to do so far today. Polanco dumps it off to Peatling, and he gets the roll. Back into the game. Mason Peatley had to sit for a little bit with those two fouls, but comes back with about 10 minutes to go and makes an immediate impact on the offensive end. Ten on the shot clock as Simpson resets the offense now. Simpson slices the defense. And scoops it through as all Tristan Simpson right there. Well, he got Eastern Washington to switch on him, and Peatling ended up on him. And once he had the big, he just took him to the rim. Very shifty. 
just comes across as a very intelligent basketball player, though, doesn't he? Especially for a guy his age. Well, he just looks under control, too, you know? I mean, that's the thing. A lot of times you'll see point guards sometimes don't play under control. I don't, never sense that on Simpson. He seems like he's under control, knows what he wants to get accomplished, and is in tune with what Craig Smith wants as well. And that's what you want out of your point guard. Here he comes back. Knocks down the jumper for Eastern Washington. Seven for him now. Trey Birch Manning goes right around Polanco and up and under for the basket. Birch Manning had a great second half here against Drake and has played very well since the break again. It really started well in this game. And the Coyotes would love to see number 12 play that kind of consistent basketball going forward. Yeah, there's no question about that. He's only had two double-figure games this year, so he's had a lot of up and down. Fuller, good job being up on Peatling. Tyler Peterson tries to push it ahead. Out, slow it down. Here's Carlton Hurst. Lost the handle as he made some contact with Wisnut there. 58-49. USD's been on a good run here of late. They've stretched that one-point halftime lead to nine. Tristan Simpson leading the way, dropping some dimes. Coyote Basketball on Midco Sports Network is presented by Vern ID Motor Cars. 7.56 to go in the ballgame. 58-49, South Dakota. And Brad, you made the comment during the break. It feels like this game could go one way or another. It's just a matter of which team decides to take it. Yeah, I think this is a tipping point here the next couple minutes. If you're Eastern Washington, you've hung in in a tough road environment. You're only down nine, but if you're USD, you're also looking at that thing and you can stretch this thing out pretty quick and put it away. Good defensive possession by UC. They've weathered a couple sets already that Eastern Washington tries to run. Lizna late in the shot clock splash over Trey Birch Manning. Lizna doesn't take a lot of threes, but he's been timely on the ones. He's hit two of three today, and they've both been huge. 18 on him for him on the day. Trey Birch Manning with it now. Leads the Cows with 13. Washington's done a great job on Matt Mooney today. USD's leading scorer. Long, Simpson, nice job. Long two for Tristan Simpson. Had a foot just inside that perimeter. That's what I'm talking about. If Simpson can be consistent with his outside shot, make teams pay for going under that ball screen, that's huge. Look at how well USD protects inside the three-point arc. Mooney a little late getting over there, but it was enough. Offensive rebound for Peatling, and he is fouled on the putback. Trey Birch Manning, just his first, though, on the afternoon. It's the fifth team foul on South Dakota. Two free throws, though, coming up for Peatling. That was a classic example of South Dakota did a great job blocking out, Jay, but nobody went and got the basketball. And you got to finish it by going and getting it, and Peatling did just that for Eastern Washington. Season high now, 14 points. For a sophomore out of Melbourne, Australia, making 15. He's six of six at the free throw line, came in 76%. And some pressure here from the Eagles. Birch Manning up the floor. Tyler Peterson tried to take it at Peatling. It didn't work out real well. Really a bad decision by Peterson. I know he had numbers there a little bit, but you're going against someone who's four inches taller than you. Lizna, tough shot there. Simpson, though, unable to grab the rebound and a second chance here for Eastern Washington. This is a big possession for Eastern Washington. They've got this thing down to six. Peatling kicks it out. Perry for three. Kyles, do a good job being up. Prevent those second chance points there and a six point lead as we tick under six minutes to play. Again, Craig Smith has not used his bench much here in the second half. Moody unable to hit offensive board for Nick Fuller and it gets caught between the rim and the glass. Alternating possession goes to Eastern Washington. Tyler Hagedorn with those four personal fouls checks back in for Fuller. 
So we'll see how Hagedorn handles this. He did a pretty decent job after picking up number three. But crucial minutes now coming up for the Kyle Jr. forward. This is where the game's going to get decided. Obviously, in the last five and a half here, this guy. Every possession gets magnified. So watch and roll there. Yep. Yeah, they're running it with, with anybody up top there. Heatling over Hagedorn. He wanted foul number five. And he sticks with it. Gets it to go. Peatling. 17 now on the afternoon for him. And it's back to a four-point ball game. Simpson dumps it off. Birch batting a nice strong finish inside. That's a big bucket. USD really needed it as Eastern Washington really sees momentum. The Eagles really going to this high ball screen a lot now. Trying to get USD switched off or off a guy. Crowd starting to get into it a little bit here at the Sanford Kyle Sports Center. Jesse Hunt, big fella going to the rim. Now when you're a road team like Eastern Washington, who's had to live a lot of life on the road this season, you're happy to be in this position now. Mooney, what a find for Ooh. Birch Batty. When Mooney's had dribble penetration, he's done an excellent job in this game, Jay, finding open teammates and not forcing the issue. Greg Smith, Washington. a little encouragement yeah. to the fan base there after that last bucket from Birch Manning. Jesse Hunt does it again. What big buckets by Eastern Washington. They are not going away in this game. Well, we're just getting started under four minutes to play. Birch Manning off the dribble. We got a couple of big guys going back and forth here. Trey Birch Manning. 19 points on 8 of 12, plus 7 rebounds. Yeah, he has come alive here and really sparked USD offensively in the last couple minutes. Heatling. Swing it out, here's Bliznuk. Still guarded by Birch Manning. Baseline jumper, Heatling. Off the window and in. These teams just trading blows here now in the last three and a half. We haven't had a stoppage in play in a long time. Carlton Hurst has been sitting at the score table, Jay, for almost three minutes of game time here, trying to get into this thing. Good find again, Mooney, but a little too strong for Peterson on the land. Great pass from Matt Mooney that time. Fortunately, the Coyotes unable to capitalize. Jesse Hunt. Boy, that guy's got a little confidence right now. And a timeout for Craig Smith with 2.45 remaining. It's a... Good ball game here. 66-64, Trey Burge Manning and Jesse Hunt going back and forth. Coming up here on Minko Sports Network, men's basketball, North Dakota at South Dakota State, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, future Summit League rivals. And that one at Frost Arena, Valley City State at North Dakota State, Tuesday night, also at 7 o'clock. That one can be found on Minko SN2. We've got high school basketball coming up Thursday night, it's Yankton and Brandon Valley. And that game, they're going, giving it the Wayback Machine, yeah. Brad. It's going to air in black and white, so you might want to tune in just to see that. Exciting stuff coming from the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls. Jason and Darren, I'll be on the call. i got to watch my Hoosiers before I get ready <laughs> for that one. Foul goes against Gibson. It's his fourth. And the ninth team foul, that'll put Matt Mooney on the free throw line. Again, a one and one situation. Coyotes have not handled these very well today. Nick Fuller, a couple of misses. USD's been pretty good from the foul line overall, but like you said, miss those front ends. Those are costly. That's a big one there by Mooney. And Craig Smith dialing up a play to get his star player of the basketball out of that timeout. Two for Mooney. He's got 12. On the afternoon, he's into double figures for the ninth time in his 11 games. Did sit out the game against Mount Marty a couple of weeks back. Four-point lead, 68-64 for South Dakota. Wide open, Jesse Hunt. The big guy. 
ran out of luck there as he had hit a couple of big shots going to the rim. Tried his luck at a three, and it's off the mark. Just a 29% three-point shooter. Well, the key there for South Dakota is they got, they got Bliznuk to give the ball up, their leading scorer. And that's what you want. Spot up Matt Mooney. And when does that guy come alive, Brad, when it matters most? Am I right? We've seen how many times have we seen that? Big shot for the freshman coming back with Perry. Wow, Perry, I don't know about that look there. That was a tough shot. It's a, a lot going into that thing. If you miss it, boy, that pretty much could sink you if you're Eastern Washington. But he gets it, and now we're back to a one-possession game. Approaching the one-and-a-half-minute mark here. Tyler Hagedorn still out there with those four fouls. Catch and shoot. Matt Mooney oh boy. takes the bank's not open on Sunday, Brad. Not supposed to be, but it was for Mooney. Back-to-back wow. -back buckets for Matt Mooney. And a marker comes onto the floor from the Eastern Washington bench. They blow the play down. How about this? Falling away. And it's like he knew it was happening the entire time. Dead center of that square. Now seven straight points for Mooney here to give his team a two-possession lead. Far and away the biggest shot of the day for South Dakota. To this point, Bliznuk wants to answer. Perry wants a second straight three, and he got it. Well, that's Bliznuk just drawing so much attention to himself, Jay. Perry getting the open look, and boy. The freshman stepped up huge twice. One minute to go. Perry now with 13 points, a career high for the freshman in just his second career start. I think it's about to found something in that young man. Mooney oh, rolls off the rim. And now a chance to tie for Eastern Washington. Jesse Hunt nearly traveled with it. Look at backdoor, Bliznuk off the hand of South Dakota. And are the officials going to take a look at this one? They might. That was close. Or at least from our perspective, it looked close. Yeah, I think they got to take a look at it. Last two minutes, this is a reviewable play, and that's exactly what our officiating crew is going to do. So 30.4 seconds remaining. And they did on the call on the floor was Eastern Washington basketball. That's correct. And that is important because if you're going to overturn it, obviously you got to have a pretty good evidence from the video to do so. And when we get a chance, we'll try to show you what it looked like from our vantage point as well here. But Jay, South Dakota has had big shots on their end by Matt oh. Mooney. But to Eastern Washington's credit, they've gotten huge shots as well. How about Jack Perry, their freshman, seven up two huge threes here in the last couple minutes as we see it one more time. Boy, it's tough to see. I mean, the question would be, did Trey Birch Manning get a piece of that? You, a, lot, a lot of times you look at the rotation, and I'm not sure it would have changed. And it's going to stick with Eastern Washington. So they didn't see anything that was indisputable. Yep. And that's the only way you can reverse the call on the floor. So Eastern Washington will keep it 17 seconds on the shot clock and 30.4 on the game clock. Now you've got to review it to get it right, but that is advantage Eastern Washington kind of getting a free timeout now. Let's see what they do on this OB play. It's Birch Manning and Blizzard having a conversation before <laughs> the inbound. Old buddies. Hey, how much fun is this, right? Do you think that's part of it? Perry, who's had the hot hand here late. The freshman almost threw it away. Gibson did a good job hanging on. Under 10 now for the Eagles. Bliznuk takes a look at the game clock and now takes on his buddy Birch Manning. Tough shot there, and the rebound is controlled by Mooney. Great job defensively by not only Birch Manning, but I think it was Hagedorn that came over there and helped out without fouling. USD has had great team defense all afternoon on Bliznuk. It made his shots very difficult. And that possession was no exception. To me, the key thing was is that USD was able to corral the D board after they had to bring a lot of help defense to shut down Bliznuk's offensive shot. That foul, by the way, was on Ty Gibson. That's his fifth, so he's done for the day. The other significant part is now it's a double bonus. So the Kyles get two free throws regardless. And one of them would make it a two-possession game with 13.5 seconds remaining. 
that's the big thing. And if you're Eastern Washington, even if he makes a free throw, you're not out of this yet. There's still time. You're just going to have to go, and you're going to have to go quick. Rooney. Down the stretch of this game, Brad, you look at a couple of free throws earlier, then he hit the big two, hit the big three, and now chance to add to the lead in the final seconds. Perry wanted in there, and I, I think that's a good job by the officiating crew not calling a lane violation there. He was started to switch spots before Mooney got the ball. Mooney knocks them both down. Peterson checks back in. A timeout on the floor for South Dakota with 13 and a half to go. 32nd timeout, Brad. And so how do you handle this situation? There's, there's no perfect way to do it. Obviously, you're down five. You've got to score twice. You know yep. that much. What do you go for first? I think if you're Eastern Washington, you got a chance here now at the dead ball to maybe see if you can drop and get a three-point look because more than likely you're going to need a couple threes to get this thing into overtime. And so with 13.5 to me, a two-point uh, make still keeps you in it, but the glimmer of hope is pretty small at that point. So I'm expecting a three here out of Eastern Washington with all five guys crashing the oval ass. How do you handle it defensively if you're South Dakota? Do, do not foul. That's the worst thing that South Dakota could do here would be foul and stop the clock. You want to contest without fouling and then go after the rebound strong with two hands. Also know that if it's a made bucket, you know Eastern Washington's probably going to be bringing some press if they don't call a timeout before that. And you can see South Dakota going to pick up some in the backcourt, but you don't want to be crazy back here if you're pressure and get yourself out of position. Just trying to get the Eagles to use time. Hurst nearly got the turnover, and now a foul will be whistled against the Coyotes. That is just the sixth team foul, though, That's so a good still point. no shots. Yeah, that's a good point. Fallon there without having to send Eastern Washington to the line, and I think that's why South Coast is maybe a little bit more aggressive in the backcourt there. Boy, Eastern Washington really wanted a foul on Trey Birch Manning as he guarded Bliznik on the way up. 4.2, so Eastern Washington took a lot of time there. Benzel. Are they even going to get a shot off here? Menzel does, and he makes with point four remaining to make it 75-73. Huge shot for Cody Benzel there. Hasn't played a lot today, but he's knocked down a couple of triples. Yeah, not out of, quite out of time yet. And the official is going to go and look and just see if the time is accurate here. But Eastern Washington on life support still with a chance here. Well, we thought this was going to be a good Mid-major basketball game, Brett. It certainly has turned into that. Yeah, maybe records were a little deceiving coming in. Again, Eastern Washington three and six, Jay. But again, they played a ton of road games and, and played a lot of high majors too. They got losses against Washington, Utah, UNLV, beat Stanford, and a win know. over Stanford. Yeah. So uh, they played a really difficult schedule. You can tell they're going to be a, a formidable team in the Big Sky this year. Take a look at the shot by Benzel. And it's when it goes through the net. Maybe 0 .5, 0 .6. Looks like they left it, though. There's still .4 on the clock. Yeah. I think they made it. They decided they got it right. And now the whole key for South Dakota, get the ball inbounded. Yes. South Dakota does still have one more timeout if they need it. Birch Manning can move the baseline as well. Finds Mooney. And that will do it. Great basketball game today between South Dakota and Eastern Washington. Back and forth for much of the afternoon. Kyle's built a big first half lead. Eastern Washington cut it to one by the half. And it was a 43-42 advantage for the Coyotes over the final 20 minutes. And South Dakota wins its 10th straight home game by a score of 75-73. Your first Premier Bank player of the game, Trey Birch Manning for South Dakota. 19 points for him on the afternoon. He hit eight of 12 shots, one of two from outside, also had eight rebounds, one assist, and one steal all around. Good effort for Trey Birch Manning, the junior out of Federal Way, Washington. Big afternoon against his good buddy, Bogdan Blizdak.
and his home state team, Eastern Washington University. Coyotes win at 75 to 73 this afternoon, improved to nine and three on the season. Their head coach is Craig Smith, and he's with Brad Newitt. Some of them are grinders. That was kind of the one was way it was here today. It was, and I, to be honest, I just had that feeling it was going to be that type of team, type of game. Uh, you know, they they've been in a little bit of a rut, but they've had like eight or nine straight road games, and you could sense their last game against San Fran that they really played very very well and picked up a lot of confidence and found something. And we got to be better. Our, our post defense was lacking certainly. Got a lot of foul issues. Um, they hurt us with some of our doubles. Um, and you got to give them credit. They, you know, down the stretch, they made some big-time plays and made some clutch shots, uh, but so did we. And so I thought Mooney really got going in the second half. I thought Trey Birch Manning did a heck of a job on, on number 32, Bogan, whatever his last name is. And so, you know, we haven't been in kind of this kind of a grinder game in a while. And so at the end of the day, as disappointed as I was the way we played the first half, I thought we played pretty well. And it was good to, to finish a game, you know, the way we did. All right, well, enjoy this one. I know you guys are hitting the road for a big stretch coming up here. What's new? <laughs> Thanks All right, a lot. yep. Go Yotes. Craig Smith and the Coyotes. What a close one. 75-73, back to wrap it up right after this. Ready to go to nine and three on the season. Certainly Craig Smith much happier with his team's performance in the second half of this basketball game today. Well, they played great offensively. Shot 62% in the second half. Struggled from the three-point line all day, but still enough gritty baskets when they needed it to get the win. All right, let's take a look at your second half highlights now. And Bogan Bliznuk, one of the top mid-major players in the country, certainly looked the part here this afternoon. He finishes with 18 points. He did it on 7 of 15 shooting, and he had to go against a lot of help defense throughout the afternoon, but Hit two threes, that was a big thing for Eastern Washington. Slow start on the afternoon, but down the stretch of this game, Matt Mooney, clutch as usual. Yeah, he goes over a 1,000 points for his career here this, this afternoon. But the big buckets, when his team really needed him down the stretch, Jay Mooney came up huge in the last four minutes of this game. Absolutely, Mooney finishing with 19 points on 5 of 12 shooting, which is 1 of 6 from outside is 8 of 8 at the free throw line. The other guy who did it all day long was Trey Burke's man. Yeah, he was great around the basket, finishing against some size and inside, shooting 8 for 12 from the field. And if South Dakota can get that kind of production, that efficiency out of Trey Burke's man, it's really going to go a long way. And they needed it today in a game when Tyler Hagedorn, their starting post, struggled. Final stats brought to you by CU Mortgage Direct LLC. Brad, you mentioned uh, Kyle shooting the basketball very well. Second straight game here at home. Did it against Drake on Wednesday and again this afternoon yeah. against Eastern Washington. Over 50%. That is fantastic shooting. They struggled, like we said, from the three-point line. That's not on here. Just 2 of 12 there. But great interior scoring yeah. for USD, and that's why they ended up winning this game. And Kyle's outscoring Eastern Washington 46-28 to in the paint this afternoon. They win their 10th straight home game here this afternoon. And they get set for a big road trip. You talked a little bit about it with Craig at Northern Arizona, at San Jose State, and then at UCLA before coming home before Christmas. Yeah, heading over to the left coast for some tough ones. And this will be good for this team to kind of get away, I think, too, and just continue to grow together before they get ready for what's going to be obviously a very challenging Summit League schedule after That's Christmas. Your final score here today, Kyle's goes 9-3 and three on the season. They beat Eastern Washington by a count of 75. 73. For Brad Newitt, our Midco SN crew, I'm Jay Elson. Thanks for watching.